In this video, we're going to look at different types of telescope available to beginners, what their individual strengths and weaknesses are, and hopefully help you to choose your first telescope. Before we look at the individual types of telescope, let me say that there's no right or wrong choice. Here at Astronomia, we consider ourselves much like a dating service. We've got a range of over 200 instruments at our disposal, and the biggest part of our job is to match them with their new owners' needs and budget. Speaking of budget, there's no golden amount you should spend either. Whilst it's true that you get what you pay for, our telescopes range from £55 right up to three quarters of a million. Our only criteria is that each one we sell represents good value for what it costs. So let's take a look at a typical telescope. It has a few key components. Firstly, the optical tube, which contains the lenses or mirrors. The optical tube sits on some kind of mount, which allows you to steer it around to look at the different parts of the sky. Finally, the mount sits on a tripod, which puts the whole thing at a usable height. We're going to focus on the optical tube first. There are three main types of optical tube. The first is the refractor, which was invented over 400 years ago by Galileo. This is generally a long, thin tube with a large lens at the front. It's the ratio of this length to the diameter that really defines the characteristics of a telescope. A longer telescope generally has a higher magnification. We call it a longer focal length and a wider telescope gathers more light from the stars, then squeezes it into the pupil of your eye, making fainter objects like galaxies many times brighter. So you can see that refractors are generally best for small, bright objects that need lots of magnification, but not too much brightening. In particular, refractors are great for viewing the moon and planets. The second type was invented by Newton around 50 years later and is known as a reflector, or Newtonian reflector. These use mirrors rather than lenses to gather light, which makes them far less expensive than refractors for a given diameter. Reflectors have an opposite emphasis really to a refractor, with a shorter focal length and a much larger aperture size. This makes them fantastic for viewing deep sky objects like galaxies, faint stars and nebulae, but a little less good for viewing the moon and planets. The third type of optical tube is a much more recent invention less than 70 years old, and it's very much a hybrid of the first two types. It's known as a catadioptric, which means it has a combination of lenses and mirrors. There are several different catadioptrics, but the two main types are Schmidt Cassegrains and Maxitov Cassegrains. Maxitovs are the least expensive types, and like refractors, they're really best for the moon and planets. Schmidts are a more general purpose design that gives great views of all the various objects in the sky. There's another advantage of these catadioptric types too. As you can see, they're very compact, despite having plenty of magnification built in. If this were a traditional reflector or refractor, it would be at least five feet long. Of course, this comes at a price, and catadioptrics are usually the most expensive type of starter telescope. So to recap, you've got three types, refractors, reflectors, and catadioptrics. Refractors generally give you the best views of the moon and planet, Reflectors are built for deep sky objects like galaxies and nebulae, and in the middle you've got catadioptrics, which are more compact and can be more general purpose. Now let's talk about mounts. Many people will tell you that the mount is every bit as important as the optical tube, and it is. It's what provides you with the ability to point your telescope accurately, and of course with stability, which is pretty important when you're looking at objects using high magnification. There are two main types of mounts, and we'll start with the simplest, what's known as an altazimuth mount. The altazimuth mount is basically like a photo tripod. It moves up and down, left and right. Of course, this is very intuitive. We're used to this kind of movement and it's easy to find stuff in the sky. These mounts are also generally quite lightweight and portable. They only have one drawback, which is that unless you're standing on the North Pole, the stars don't move up, down, left or right. To get over this problem, a German scientist named Fraunhofer invented what we call the equatorial mount. This mount is easily adjusted for your position on the Earth's surface, just by aligning it with the pole star. Once you've done that, you can set it on any object in the sky and then track that object just by turning a single wheel. In recent times, manufacturers have started adding motors to their altazimuth mounts, and most recently they've added a database too. This go-to mount allows you to select what you want to view from a simple menu then it automatically finds it in the sky and will track it electronically for as long as you want. It can be the best of both worlds for smaller telescopes and takes a lot of the frustration out of finding the fainter stuff. But of course, you might not learn quite as much as you would without a go-to mount. 
There's one more type of map that's worth knowing about, and it's called the Dobsonian. It's essentially a rotatable box which allows you to point the telescope manually in any direction you choose. Of course, it's dead easy to use, but it is a little bit clunky. Some manufacturers have even added some go-to functionality for these, but think very carefully, because although it gives you the ability to use a large reflector in a straightforward way, it is, of course, a lot to lug around, and you need to be sure you're going to be able to cope with it. So what about manufacturers? Here at Astronomia, we stock all the major quality manufacturers, and for starter telescopes, the two largest brands by far are Celestron and Skywatcher. Celestron specialise in catadioptric optical tubes on go-to mounts, whereas with Skywatcher, the emphasis is more on manual, equatorial mounts with refractors and reflectors. They have a good range of Dobsonians too. Another brand worth looking at is Vixen. This is a high quality Japanese manufacturer, and although they concentrate on the more advanced end of the market, they do have a couple of great value starter telescopes like this one. All three offer excellent reliability, so you should get years of good service out of whichever one you choose. There are a few more pieces of advice. First, don't be tempted to buy too big at the outset. We're always telling our customers that the best telescope is the one you use the most, so you don't want setting up to be too daunting, or there's a chance you won't ever want to get started. Beware advice from other astronomers too. They'll usually only recommend the kit that worked for them, whereas it's really important that you choose what will work for you. If you're unsure, go with your gut instinct or come in and see us. We'll ask you lots of questions and make sure you leave with the right kit for the job. Finally, don't agonise over the decision. Any decent telescope will give you good views of the sky and you'll see things that maybe you never thought possible, like the beautiful rings of Saturn, the craters of the Moon or the moons of Jupiter. If by chance you do end up with the wrong telescope, we have a unique and comprehensive returns policy that allows you to exchange or upgrade your telescope without any financial penalty. In fact, you can even upgrade to a larger model at any time in your first year of ownership without losing anything. All the details are on our website. So, thank you for watching. I hope this introduction has helped you to understand the different types of telescope and given you some idea of what you might want to choose. Remember, if you need more help to decide, you can visit us here in Surrey seven days a week or just give us a call for all the advice you need. We specialise in helping new astronomers and we'd love to help you too. Goodbye.